Welcome to the Outlook Inn and New Leaf Cafe, located in East Sound on Orcas Island. And this place is beautiful. You wake up to the sounds of water lapping the shore from spacious guest rooms to luxurious waterfront suites. All accommodations are complete with modern necessities, luxurious amenities, and coastal flair. And of course, a team that embodies the epitome of island hospitality. Every single word of that copy is accurate. <laughs> we stayed there for this entire Orca Islands Film Festival. And for the first half of our stay, we were in Water's Edge. And these rooms were literally right on the edge of the water. We would just be waking up with the sun and brewing this like complimentary Nespresso cup of coffee and then going out onto the balcony and watching the, the seals literally in the water have breakfast. It was everything. And these rooms were so beautiful. We really didn't want to leave the room at all during our stay. When we were in that room, we're like, we just want to stay here all day. The second half of our stay, though, they put us in the studio suite, which had an unobstructed view of the bay. And it was across the road, kind of higher up on the mountain. So you got a, a wider uh, view of the entire bay. And it was absolutely stunning. Every morning we had breakfast at the New Leaf Cafe. Every morning. We wouldn't want to go anywhere else in town for breakfast. And it was connected right to the lobby of the Outlook Inn. And those eggs, Benedict's, were delicious. Same with the coffee. I mean, it was such a beautiful stay. I, I really honestly, honestly could not recommend visiting the Orcas Island and staying at the Outlook Inn. And, of course, eating at the New Leaf Cafe. Every single one of these conversations takes place in the meeting room next to the Water's Edge rooms over at the Outlook Inn. So we're incredibly grateful that we got to stay there. I mean, twist my arm. It was, you know, it was tough, but we made it through. And all of these conversations are also in association, of course, with the Orcas Island Film Festival. So check out Outlook Inn and the New Leaf Cafe today. This is Clayton Howe's Entertainment X. For this episode, I chat with Gare Duane, and we cover a little bit of everything from opportunity, growth, kindness, how he's gotten better at asking questions, of course, his film, Goodbye, Julia, how he prepared for that role, and many others, along with patience, focus, and listening. And we had this conversation at the Orcas Island Film Festival right after we viewed Goodbye, Julia, which is a film festival I highly recommend you check out. Links to the uh, festival are in the bio. And I hope you enjoy this conversation with Gare Duane. We're back. I'm Clayton Howe. And today with me on the beautiful Orcas Island, Gare Duane. Gare, thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad we can uh, have this conversation about Goodbye, Julia, and really your, your whole career to date, <laughs> if we can kind of capture a little bit of all of it. You know, before I get to any of that, though, I want to take it back to the beginning of time for you. What, what were your entertainment dreams growing up? Uh, what was my entertainment dream? Well, first, thank you, Clayton, for this podcast for me to really express myself in front of you about my entertainment dream <laughs> <laughs> of course and so much more <laughs> my dreams early on was for me just to be safe you know because i come from a background of a ridiculous background of civil war in, in sudan so all our dream was always just to be safe mm. you know be in a safe place safe environments and environment where at least I can learn something, environment where I can become a child all over again. Mm. And that, that was a dream in itself. Mm. Yes. And it's such a, I mean, it's, you, as I was doing my research and learning more about you and just this, the child soldier to struggling refugee to peace activist, actor, model, author, what's, is there like a most rewarding aspect <laughs> to all of this? Well, you know, I would say, you know, um, I have carried all of these titles, and all these titles to me, they mean, you know, opportunity, different opportunities, different time, different growth in yeah. my time, you know. And uh, being a model, and then I was expressing myself by wearing clothes. Being an actor, I'm expressing myself through words. 
on the silver screens and, and, and being a humanitarian, of course, we all have that shred of humanity in, in, in all of us. And then it's, it's about how do you really explore it and really communicate it to help somebody else. So I never really look at those titles as something special that happened to me. It's just different opportunity, different time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, through your work, you're leaving the world better than you found it. And I appreciate I that. I hope so. Man. I, hope, I hope I'm, I'm a better attendant <laughs> yeah. in this world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm curious, too, you know, growing up, what did you learn about kindness? Uh, you know, um, what did I learn about kindness? Well, there has to be value, intrinsic value that was cultivated in me by my mom or my dad, you know, or my community, where I come from in South Sudan, you know. Mm. And, 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 and kindness come with that, you know. If, if, and I think all of us have that kindness, you know. It depends on how you were brought up. Some of us are raised, some of us are brought up. So I was one of those guys being brought up. There's a difference between being raised and being brought up, mm. you know. Because uh, I come from a background where uh, we, 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 you know, our culture revolves around cow. And people who, who really uh, breed cows, you know, and uh, take care of cow, they have different principles. You know, you raise cow, you raise goat. Yeah. You know, we do that. But when we are brought up as human beings, we're supposed to have kindness because we are being brought up. We are not just being raised, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So I think uh, my kindness comes from me being brought up to mm-hmm. my intrinsic value by my family and my community. Well, and... and, and, and not forgetting that. I feel like so many of us get caught in the day to day of whatever you're working on. You very quickly forget, oh, let me just be (laughs) kind. That's true. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you can get get to do all these great things and and still be kind. It's not going to take anything away from you. Right. Or being kind to other people is not taking anything away from from a person. Mm. So, uh, you just gotta, you just gotta do it, and res- respect yourself, respect other people. Other people will respect you, and they will be kind to you, and it works. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. You get what you give. <laughs> you- <laughs> it's true. Do you have any um, mentors? Any standout lessons? Absolutely, absolutely. When I came to the states here, then um, you know, I'm always inspired to learn. Learning is always the thing, and there's uh, plenty of people really give me resources to, to, or invest in me to really go to college and also tutor me. Those are resources that I needed it from early on because when I came to the States, I didn't go to school. So I start here at ninth grade, you know, mm. and, uh, and I need all the mentors, some of the teachers that have done that uh, and uh, many people that I met along the way. So I have many mentors, yes. Yeah. Do you have any takeaways from being, because you're incredibly worldly, you know, you have a, growing up in multiple locations, it's completely different, you know, communities. I wonder, are there any lessons or takeaways from your travels, from interacting with different people all over the world and telling these stories? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, when I first came to New York, I figured that I'm going to a place where I'm going to try to pursue some of my dreams as my you know as a, as an actor and also modeling came along but before I know it I actually I moved to New York to meet people with a different culture with different outlook with different views mm. uh, different perspectives and then uh, and all of a sudden you know I ha- I have to hold those perspect- pers- perspective too along with them because I'm learning from different people from all over the world. Mm. So I felt lucky, I, lucky enough to be healthy and, uh, and to meet great people and uh, go around the world and really gaze the world and learn something new and, and, and it helped me, you know, become who I am. Mm. And that's how my transformation comes about, you know. So every single time I'm really talking about my life story, I'm always talking from a place of purpose, you know, tying it up to my journey mm. and, and, and make 
it makes sense like that for me to do the advocacy that I'm trying to do, for me to act in films, for mm. me to do humanitarian works, so to just get involved in, in a very impactful way. Mm. So I would say uh, this comes just because of opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Through performing and, uh, and writing, how have you gotten better at asking questions? I'm asking myself questions. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, um, it's like I have to, you, have to, you have to look. When, you, when we take journeys like this in a, in, in, a crea- in a creative world, a creative way of making films, writings, you have to mm-hmm. ask yourself a lot of questions. It's like you're looking at yourself. Uh, with the ego eye, you know, when the ego fly, then you have to look at itself like that. You got yeah. <laughs> a five thousand foot view, yes. looking down, taking it all. Yes, in. yes, you got to scan yourself. So I think my yeah. quiz, me writing things, uh, I can't just write. I have to have something to say in order for me to make sense. Yeah, and in order for me to make sense, and then I have to ask myself these questions, mm. and then they come in the form of write, writings, and then put them down in a book. And then, um, and people get to read them. And then, but those questions come from some people. They ask me surgical question like you are doing now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for going on the journey. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, do you have any daily rituals or meditations, or do you journal daily or any? I journal. I journal all the time, and I I, I, I spend a lot of time by myself. You know, I I spend a lot of quiet time walking. I walk long distance. Yeah. You know, sometimes I walk, I can walk from West Fourth all the way to 145th Street, and that's 9 to 10 miles. Yeah. Someday I can do like 20 miles a day. It's Monday to Sunday. Oh so, God. and I do it by myself. It's not, a, it's not a walking that I do with a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I walk fast. <laughs> <laughs> they can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, they can't keep up. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm doing all types of things, you know. I'm yeah. doing my push up I'm doing my pull-ups, and I'm listening to my podcast and listening to my books. I love, I love being alone. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's so interesting how much you can grow as a human when you spend time with yourself. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's true. You, to learn who you are. I think it's <laughs> most, so many people don't know who they are. <laughs> and I think if more people did. <laughs> they have a bad problem. That's a bad problem. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Uh, let's talk about the film, Goodbye, Julia. Yes. Uh, quite a thriller. Quite a story. Thank you. I'm curious. Yeah. What, what do you hope the world can take away from seeing Goodbye, Julia? Well, there's themes. There's themes in their yeah. films. There's love in their films. Yeah. There's purpose in their films. And also there's a... There's calling for war forgiveness. And I think I chose that. I chose to play that role on those bases. Mm. And that should be a takeaway for anyone that really watched this film, Goodbye, Julia. Mm. Yes. Is there a project, I don't know if you've entered this already, is there a particular project or role that has taught you the most about yourself? Well, I, all the film that I have done is, is always something that teaches me about myself. And, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, I think I, sh- I, sh- yeah, I, sh- I, choose, I choose film on, on learning. Mm. Yeah, when I first did the movie I Had Huckabees, I have no idea what is uh, exist- existentialism is about. So later on, I got to learn, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then yeah. when I did the good lie, you know, it's, of course, it's, it's about us integrating ourselves into American society and become Americans. Yeah. And and and, I, and 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 me coming in to really work with the brilliant filmmakers like Philippe Florido and Marley Smith, it, it was just it's a whole different way for us to really um, do something constructive together. Yeah. And. Uh, and now, goodbye, Julia. You know, I'm always meeting great minds who really want to do great things, especially in the film world. And uh, and I, I enjoy that. I'm always mm-hmm. learning something. Yes. Preparing for that role, I imagine it was a lot of time alone. Yeah. <laughs> was there a, is there a particular process for you? Uh, you know, in, in preparing. W- well, when uh, when Muhammad was doing the was was still writing the. The scripts, you know, 
he contacted me and then he sent it to me. He was generous enough for me to look into it. And mm -hmm. then and he told me to give him notes, you know, and how he could really shape my character because he say he wrote that character particularly for me. Yeah. Because he felt like he's being inspired by my previous works and he watched the good lie and stuff. Yeah. And uh, and then he also he saw me I did a TED Talks at Geneva years ago and then uh, and he loved it. He's like I want I wrote this character particularly just for you mm -hmm. and I want you to play it. I was like, listen man, I never been to cartoon. I never been to cartoon mm -hmm. in my entire life. You know, even though we were going through civil war for twenty some years with the northern Sudanese people, I never I never know these people. So it mm -hmm. was like an opportunity for me to go back and go face face the people that we fight for a long time and even we split the Sudan into two different states. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to know the people of North Sudan. And, and who they are, how they feel about who we are as a South Sudanese. Mm -hmm. So the only opportunity that I get for me to be in Sudan was this film. So I took the role to go there. I never been. Mm -hmm. So I stayed there by myself. It was a lot of help from the guys because my Arabic was pretty rusty. Uh, I spent too much time in the United States, 30 years here. <laughs> Arabic is not, <laughs> it's not longer a second language to me yeah. anymore. <laughs> You don't hear too much of it in New York yeah, City. Yeah, <laughs> I've been in New York City for too long. <laughs> so they, they, you know they have to they have to they have to help me. You know, work yeah. on my Arabic, how to deliver my lines, and yeah, with the emotion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was quite a preparation. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. In choosing projects now, how has your taste evolved in what you want to work on? I, well, I, I, sometimes I have to, I have to see how our society is, how our society is evolving, uh, in, in order for me to do something. Mm. And uh, I just don't choose projects to choose projects, you know. Mm. I choose them when I know I can embody something, mm. and that something is always something to do with the society. So that's how I've been working. Yeah. 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 Do you have a balance between? in life between letting things happen and making things happen? I think I develop a patience, endless patience, patience. about a lot of things, yes. Yeah. I don't force things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, remember, I'm a former athlete, so. Yeah. <laughs> the, being a former athlete, you know, kind of help you, help you to really balance things, you know? And, uh, I, and, uh, and, and I use things that I learned as an athlete and things that I, learn to really take care of myself, you know, incorporate them in, and how I really balance myself in my life. You know? Well, patience is a gift. I think so. I think everybody should have some patience. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's, a, it's hard. It can be hard. I mean, that is, it, it's a practice, you know, to practice patience, yes. to, re to relax into the whatever you believe in <laughs> that's, that's happening. Right. That's it, right. Everything will work out, you know, if you... Yes, yes. You, you got you got to. There's a lot of people talks about, you know, uh, manifestations. It makes sense to me, mm -hmm. you know? It makes sense me to too. me. And then, yeah. And then, uh, but I don't have the language to really express that. Yeah. But I can make it happen. I yeah. Know. Well, what you focus <laughs> on, you find. Yeah. You know, and you find yourself focusing like, on the right things. And it. That's true. My, actually, it's good that you use that word. Focus is the word. Yeah. It's the balance, yes. It's what yeah. brings balance to me. Yeah, and, and I'm curious, even through being an athlete, how your focus has gotten better, you know, how you tune out what's not important. Yes, yes, that's true. When you're an athlete, yes, playing basketball, you, you got to be focused. <laughs> you got to be in a zone. It's, yes, it's, not a, it's a skill game, and it's a game where you are being structured. You have to learn how to listen. Yeah. So listening been the things uh, mm -hmm. that help me to become who I am, actually. Yes. Yeah. This is, this is so great. I'm so glad we're getting the chat today. And we're, it's, I, I love this bite-sized conversation. I am curious, um, metaphorically speaking, if you could put a word or a phrase on a billboard for millions of people to see, does anything come to mind? Um, that's a lot of things that can come to mind. I think, you know, when we grow or we evolve, 
it means you know uh, we can we can blend confident with humility, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then that's when you know uh, you don't just catch yourself talks about your achievements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can listen to so to, to to other people, you know. Then even if they can give you, they can lend you an ear. It's good to lend other people an ear, you know. So confidence and humility are very important. Yeah, yeah. Not bragging. <laughs> <laughs> what are you getting excited about? What's coming up for you? I know we're here at the film festival. This is an achievement. This yeah. is a past achievement in a way, you know. It it's is, like, huh? <laughs> what, what, what are you getting excited about? Well, I'm, 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 I'm always excited about a lot of things, man. You know, right now I, I do uh, some work uh, with a New Day Impact. It's, you know, a stewardship. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, I, I, I advocate about uh, galvanizing corporates and private sectors to really invest in a very impactful way, especially in clean drinking water. Uh, cleaning uh, our oceans, you know, helping our internally displaced persons and refugees, and uh, and that organization is very small, and uh, and that's what I advocate for, global goals. So we are very involved in those. And I don't remember if we said this on the air or not, but it's I think we did actually. It's a perfect example of leaving the world better than you found it. Which, if we could all focus on that. Yes. Yeah. Just leaving a little impact or a big impact that just leaves everything a little bit cleaner than we found it. Yes. We will that, have done well. That's, yep. I think that's, that's the path. That, those things, they make me excited, especially when I find people like uh, our CEO, Doug Husky, who had the same passions. So me and Doug can sit there and talk about what we can do together. And uh, he's a guy who really holds a lot of sophisticated ideas and with the research. And I enjoy, I enjoy working with him and yeah. the team that we have. That's incredible. Yes. That's incredible. Is there anything else you want to add here before we wrap up today? Anything else you want to discuss? I, I don't know. Well, right now, I'm very excited about this film festivals, and I hope everybody will come out and try to see uh, uh, my last screening. I'm going to be presenting it to, tomorrow at 12, 1230. Yeah. And uh, it would be good to have everybody in this small island to come out. Yeah. <laughs> and supported it. Yeah, this is quite a, it's been going on for a while now. But yes. You know, it seems like they're really getting back post-COVID, more of these in-person screenings. And it's it's quite a lineup and quite a great, mm-hmm. great group of humans. Oh, yes. Amazing, man. Out here at the Orca Islands Film Festival. Yeah. I so appreciate you taking the time, Gare. No, I'm happy. I'm happy that we can do this today in the island, not in New York City. <laughs> and if you want to do this in the city, no problem. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> People of the world. Gare Dwayne. Thank you. (laughs) You've been listening to Entertainment X, the podcast. You can follow Entertainment X on Instagram at underscore Entertainment X underscore. If you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Join Clay next week for another curiosity conversation on Entertainment X. Thank you for listening. 